How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. I'm going to apologize right off the bat because my internet is a little bit spotty. I'm uh, at a resort and it might take me hours to be able to download this and upload it. So I don't know how well it's going to stream, but I had to do a video with my buddy Tyler here today. We're going to be going through BlackRock and Solana and Bitcoin and talk about the market. Just know off the bat that there are links to Tyler underneath the video. He talks about Solana and Bitcoin a lot on his channel, along with some other coins too. And there are links to Margex underneath the video in case you want to trade cryptocurrency on leverage. Tyler, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, what's up, dude? Thank you for having me again, man. Yeah, of course. Um, I, I want to start with BlackRock because they had a record day of buying yesterday almost a billion dollars. Uh, the ETFs in general had a record day and it seems like they're accelerating. Like I have, you can go look up the charts. They're, they're buying more. Um, and this is two months after the launch. It doesn't seem to be slowing down. What do you think about this? Like, is this, is this going to continue to accelerate or just kind of level off at some point? I think it's definitely going to level off at some point, but I just, it's hard to tell when, right? And the, the thing about it and what's interesting to me is that I'm not as nervous about the buying that they're doing as I would typically be. So say, for example, if this was, you know, just like a, a normal, a, a normal just trading company or a, a normal company in general, whatever it may be, right? If they were buying this all up, I'd be a little bit more concerned because it's like, like if you buy all of that, you're going to sell a lot of it, right? That's just how in general people operate. But what you'll come to notice with ETS is that they're not really sellers all the money. You know, it's not like they're going to start, you know, open up this Bitcoin ETF, buy a lot of Bitcoin offer it to their clients and then sell it. You know, it's just it's just not the way that they operate. Oftentimes when they do open ETFs and they do add assets to those ETFs, those are assets they plan on holding over the, you know, a more extended period of time. And so to me I'm a little bit like curious to see where this is going because generally speaking when you see this much buy pressure, say if we would have got to 72, 73,000 dollars just off of the back of retail and basic institutional investment. I would say, okay, we're probably going to have a blow off top pretty soon here, quite simply, just because people are going to start taking profits. But when you have billions of dollars, not only weekly, but now daily flowing into Bitcoin and people accumulating to that degree through ETFs, it's to me, it's almost makes me question if we're going to have that blow off top or not at all. You know, and I know it's an opportunity. I know there are whales out there. I know there's retail out there. And I think with the combined effort enough, if enough of them sell, we could see this thing kind of really blow off top. I'm just not quite sure that it's going to happen like it's normally happened. And I think this could be the beginning of the stabilization of Bitcoin to some degree, eventually, once they do reach whatever threshold that they have. I genuinely think that BlackRock has a threshold that they're trying to reach. There's a certain number they're trying to get to as fast as they possibly can. It's just what it seems like to me, right? It has to be a mixture of their target goals and a mixture of demand. Their clients have a certain demand for what they want, and then BlackRock itself has a goal for what they want. And I'm sure it's a middle between the two. And I'm sure when they hit that goal, they'll slow down and do it more on like a weekly, consistent basis, maybe. Um, so I think it'll slow off, but I don't think it's going to lead to a huge sell-off. And it's interesting to see where this could go. I, I honestly have no idea. It's crazy, though. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing some pullbacks, but it's obviously not BlackRock. BlackRock hasn't had a day, I think, with negative uh, inflow or with outflows. Yeah. Uh, it's not like they're taking profits. It's just maybe some people that have held on since 15 or 20K. They're up three and a half X and they're happy. Or maybe some manipulation um, in different markets to try to send down the price and get some shorts liquidated uh the question is though like are we just going to continue seeing stair step up action like this is like the s p 500 but every week we have the same return as a year of the s p 500 like 10 percent a week or something like that it seems like it's gone up right now uh over the last two months so are we just going to continue to see that stair step then down a little bit stair step then down a little bit or are we going to i mean we talked about a little bit of blow off top but do you think we see that like massive move up even if we don't low off top but we maybe go from 75k up to 85k in a day yeah or 95 i think so i think i it's me guessing honestly at the end of the day and it's purely just me guessing because i don't know and i do believe this market is manipulated to the highest degree um i think that like a lot of these major institutions are going to do whatever they can do or whatever they have to do to get their hands on all of our crypto and so whatever it takes for them to shake us out is what they'll do but what i do know is that currently if i remember correctly we're approaching $1.4 billion in shorts liquidations um, currently as we speak. And to me, it's like, 
okay, while there's that many people who are expecting the market to fall, it's not going to fall. While people do keep shorting it and expecting it to fall at some point and opening up leverage positions that can be liquidated, I think we're going to continue to climb upwards because that is a max pain point. I think we are still deep within max pain for a lot of people because so many people didn't buy at 20 because it was going to go to 10. They didn't buy at 30 because it was going to go to 20. They didn't buy at any of these levels. I remember it being at 50,000 and thinking I wanted to buy some more but didn't because I was like, it surely has to pull back at some point. And so to me, knowing that the liquidations are continuing, mixed in with the fact that BlackRock clearly hasn't reached their threshold that they want to get at. And then you also mix in the fact that GBTC will eventually slow down the sell. They, they have to run out of Bitcoin to sell at some point or at least slow it down. And my thing is when you mix all those things in together in preparation of a halving as well, which is historically the biggest catalyst for Bitcoin, I don't see a reason as to why this might not continue. Sure, we might see Bitcoin fall 15 or 20 percent at one little moment, which is scary in a grand scheme of things, but not really if you've been here long enough. Um, although that is the case, I mean, the catalyst that we're seeing across so many different aspects of crypto. Yeah, I think we might as well. Like we very well may just continue this move to the upside for a while. Now, yeah. if this none of this was happening. And we're approaching a halving. I'm a firm believer in buy the rumor, sell the news. I'm a firm believer in that's what almost always happens. So I am a little bit sus. You know, as we do get close to the halving, I'm definitely going to get a little nervous, like what's going to happen. But up until that point, I mean, we still have, you know, four weeks or so. Like, it might just keep doing this. You know, I think yeah. it's very possible. Yeah, definitely. I mean, having 40 days away or something like that, we never have seen new highs before the halving. Obviously, BlackRock's buying a lot of Bitcoin, but there are other institutions that are buying uh, different assets, too. It's not just Bitcoin. I saw recently you had a video saying BlackRock and whales were buying all the Solana. Can you explain a little bit what you meant about that? Sure. Yeah. So every week on the channel, I like to cover what they call the crypto fund flow report. And what it does is it basically just says, OK, the major institutions, who they are, and what they're buying. And it kind of breaks it down on a demographical basis as well. So like what countries are buying a lot more. It's really cool. Uh, I, I can't remember the website that does it. But anyway, Point we sure. cover it every week. And yeah. And um, so what we noticed last week was that Solana itself specifically over the last few, I'd say almost two months, maybe six weeks ish they had been seeing kind of outflows, right? We saw Solana having major inflows for the last few weeks and we started to see some outflows and that's rather normal. But we saw a change in momentum over the last few weeks, over the last like seven to nine days, roughly. So I guess almost two weeks last week in which we actually saw the inflows continue up again. I think last week was a net inflow of maybe like $20 million or something like that. And that's also at a time in which we saw the alignment with Pantera announcing that they were going to be looking to purchase $250 million of Solana from FTX's estate during their bankruptcy process. And so if you consider those things, I mean, there's 10, if not hundreds of millions of dollars of Solana either being bought or being prepared to buy. So BlackRock themselves didn't necessarily buy Solana, but many of these institutions are clearly starting to throw the funds at it because it's not retail putting $20 million in or, you know, 20 million in inflows. And that's to battle the outflows of people taking profit. So to me, I mean, where we are right now is probably one of the healthiest that Solana's ever been at right now. Yeah, definitely. Now, outside of Solana and Bitcoin, what else are you looking at buying right now? Or what are you buying? What yeah. uh, opportunities do you see? Sure. Well, I have a video coming out today, or maybe it might be yesterday when this goes up. What And it's basically talking about the next place that I think money is going to start flowing to. And that's going to be like your top 20 to your top 100. And more specifically, I'm really looking at layer ones and layer twos right now. Um, obviously, many things are doing well. You know, there's pre-sales doing well launches are doing well. But my opinion, it's the trickle down feature or the trickle down effect has been very consistent throughout the history of crypto. And where we are right now is we're starting to see it happen again, right? So you see something like Bitcoin obviously doing extremely well. Now we see something like Ethereum approaching all time highs somewhat. We see BNB absolutely ripping. No one's really been talking about BNB, but it's nearly surpassed its all time high. I mean, we're getting very close now. You have something like Solana that's roughly 30% away, 40% away. Like, Many of these top five altcoins are approaching all time highs and they're going to enter into price discovery at some point. And so in my opinion, I think that, you know, we may continue to see the funds flow into your top 10, top five alts for a little while. And then after that, usually your layer ones and your layer twos within the top 20 to top 100 come next. And so that's where I'm already starting to position myself a little bit. The thing about it is many of them are up already, you know, just when Bitcoin goes up. What, what's that saying where it's like a rising sea lifts, lifts off? Yeah, there you go. That, you know, we're already seeing that a little bit. 
but I don't think people understand how much more crazy it gets from here. You know, you think about things like Jasmine, you think about things like Casper, you think about things like Render that are in that top 100 to top 40 ish area. Those are the type of ones that can easily, or, or Phantom, which is one that was in the top 15 already. Those types of ones are the ones that can end up within that top 20. And to get to the top 20, many of them still have to 5X from here or 10X from here. And so, in my opinion, I think that a few of those will make it. And that's where I'm kind of positioning myself from more of a macro perspective with my portfolio. Sure. Okay. Now, what if you felt under allocated? This is kind of the last thing I want to hit on. What if you came into this and maybe you bought a little bit of crypto or you had it from the last season, but uh, now you're feeling like maybe I didn't buy enough. Is it like the worst idea to buy more now or should you be holding off and just wait? Sure. It's kind of, it's a hard one. You know, it's a very hard one. I think at this point, it's kind of like you got to bite the bullet. You know, it's you, if you weren't buying through the bear market, you made a mistake and I'm, I'm sorry, but throughout the entire bear market, yourself and myself and many of us were saying this thing is going to turn around at some point. You're not going to know it turned around and it's just going to be too late and you need to be buying now. But obviously there are people who are just getting the crypto and they don't know what to do. And this is the message that I would have to those people is I still do believe buying now will lead to long-term gains. I, I do think that is the case. I think Bitcoin will inevitably get higher than it is now. I think every crypto in the top 10 for the most part will get higher than they are now. Obviously not stable coins, but you get the point. You know, like I think that is the case. And so obviously with that in mind, buying now with the expectation or the anticipation that on a long-term perspective, it will go up isn't a bad idea. But you must know that buying right now, especially at the top of, not the top, but I guess technically the top in the short term right now where we are, like during a parabolic move to the upside is extremely risky. And I don't think now is a time to be over allocating. I think if you have a hundred dollars that's sitting on the sideline, maybe put in five bucks or 10 bucks or 15 bucks slowly, 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 because at least you're getting in. If it continues to go up, at least you are getting in on some of these lower points. But if it goes down now, you're prepared because I do believe we're going to have a pullback at some point. I think it must happen. I don't think it's going to be major for Bitcoin, but I do think Bitcoin dominance is going to go up and altcoins are going to pull back pretty heavy. I think that has to happen at some point. I just don't know when. And I think in that moment, that's going to be one of the last opportunities people actually have to buy in a cool down or in a pullback before we rip. And that might be the last opportunity. So I am saving some funds for whenever that cool back inevitably does come. But again, I wouldn't necessarily be setting out of the market completely. I would set a DCA strategy and definitely be buying at least a little bit on a weekly basis for sure. Oh. Awesome. Tyler, thanks so much for coming on. Again, uh, if you haven't seen Tyler's channel, go check it out underneath the video. We've had him on several times and you guys have absolutely loved him every single time. Uh, so definitely go check out his channel. There's a link to Marjex too. So check him out, hit subscribe, watch a video, sign up for my Marjex if you want to start trading cryptocurrency. And Tyler, great having you on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys. I appreciate you all so much. Bye. See you guys.